Soybeans are one of the most important crops in the world. Billions of people and animals depend on them in one way or another. So when the fields aren't producing well, it makes sense to try to figure out why. There are a lot of diseases that affect soybeans. One field can have a different problem than the field next to it. The same field can have one infection one year and something completely different the next. And to make things even more complicated, plants can have more than one infection or disease problem at any given time. With so many variables, how do we pinpoint the problem? Let's talk to Clark McGrath with Iowa State University Extension and Outreach. So to pinpoint problems in soybean fields, the big thing is to get out and, and scout the field and uh, look for the problem plants in the field, whether it's in a pattern or it's just uh, specific areas or field wide. But the big thing is we have to look at the plant top to bottom. We look at the new growth. What's it going to tell us? Does it have disease, insect feeding? Uh, is it uh, malformed from some sort of chemical application? Uh, then we look further down the plant. In the middle of the plant, that tells you what happened uh, a few days ago, a few weeks ago, depending on how old the plant is. Uh, we go on down to the, to the stem. We look at the stem. What do we see there? Is that going to give us any clues as to what's going on? Sometimes we may cut the stem open late in the season to see what's inside of it. Uh, and then we look at the root system. Does it look normal? healthy or does it have signs of disease uh, or any sort of uh, other issues that, that just don't look right. And really the bottom line is, as an agronomist, you can diagnose some of these things in the field and a lot of these things, they look like each other. There's a lot of mimic out there. So we may send it back to the plant disease clinic and let them do the final diagnosis for us. Clark just brought in some uh, soybean samples from the field and our job in the clinic is to assess and try to figure out what exactly is wrong with the plants and so uh, one of the first things we do is just get an overview of the plants and so we'll look at the plants we'll look at where the symptoms are at so on this plant you have symptoms that are uh, on these upper leaves here we have a different plant here with a different type of symptom and so we have different things going on and we're trying to figure out what exactly it is. And so when Clark came in, I asked a lot of questions and he filled out this form and has information about uh, the recent weather in the field. It has information about what herbicides have been sprayed, uh, other field activity that's been going on. And so we can use that information to try to uh, help sort of hone in on what the problems are on these soybean plants. The first thing I did was I looked through the report that he gave me. I looked at the, the field history. I looked at what was sprayed. I looked at uh, sort of the environmental conditions and that gives me a clue as to what exactly I should be looking for. The first thing I noticed that there was one particular herbicide that was sprayed in this field that causes symptoms similar to what we see on this plant right here. And so uh, with this plant I'm pretty confident that this is a herbicide injury that's caused by uh, some activity that was done in the field. Now there's four groups of organisms that can cause plant disease. The first one is fungi. Fungi can cause an assortment of symptoms, and these include uh, spots on leaves. This can also include having a reduced root system or some kind of root rotting. It can also be some, having some kind of lesion on the stem. How to identify these fungi? What we do is we usually take the, some of the diseased tissue and we take it over to a microscope and we look for some of the uh, fungal structures or some of the evidence of, of fungi under the microscope. If we don't see some or if it's not clear, what we can do is then uh, plate some of these uh, leaves out on what we call auger, which is just a, a nutrient for, for the fungus to grow, and then we can actually see the, the fungus growing on that auger. The second one is bacteria. This is a, a little bit more difficult to identify than fungi, but what typically you see are uh, spots on leaves with a yellow halo around it. And what we have to do with this is we either will uh, cut that disease tissue and then look at it under the microscope and actually look for the bacteria streaming from that lesion. Or the second thing we can do is just do a, a series of lab techniques where we quickly identify what the bacteria is. The third group of pathogens is viruses. And this is actually one that's fairly difficult to identify in the lab, uh, much like bacteria. Virus symptoms usually are in the leaves and as, as what you see here is, is some kind of distortion or modeling or some kind of a problem in the leaves. Usually you don't see symptoms in the roots or in the stem. Uh, to identify viruses, what we do is you collect some of the disease tissue 
and you can take it and do a series of lab, lab tests that are specific for viruses to identify what virus is causing that problem. And then the last one uh, is nematodes. And what we have here, we do see some uh, above ground symptoms with nematodes. Usually it's some kind of uh, yellowing or even, or even smaller leaves, so stunting or, and yellowing of the plant. But the most of the activity happens in the root system. And so what you're looking for are either uh, direct evidence of, of the uh, nematodes, and sometimes you can see that on the roots, or the second thing you can do is process the soil and then look for the worms, identify those worms, and then you know what was feeding on the roots. With so many people and animals depending on soybeans for food, it's important to diagnose the disease correctly. That way, we can take steps towards treatment and prevention.